Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll discuss uh, typical data engineering interview rounds, like what to expect, how to prepare for it, where to focus your preparations, and um, we'll also provide some tips along the way. I have uh, prepared this document based on my experience interviewing with multiple big tech companies like Amazon, Meta, Spotify, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs and a bunch of other companies. Uh, so this is based on my experience uh, pa from past two years interviewing with multiple different companies. Uh, so typically, any data engineering interview uh, will have four to five rounds based on the company. But overall, they'll cover these uh, these aspects, which, are, which I'm going to share uh, in this video. So initially, you will probably have a screening call with a hiring manager or a recruiter. Um, I haven't covered those details here, but basically you will be expected uh, to share your experience and they'll evaluate um, how well you fit for you know the role that they are offering. Um, it will probably, probably be a half an hour or one hour call and it won't be of a, um, you know, intense uh, technical questions or anything. It will mostly be your resume based questions. So be prepared for that. Uh, once you pass that round, uh, initial screening round, then you'll have uh, four or five different uh, interview rounds, again, based on the company, but they will basically evaluate uh, like four or five different skills uh, on the data engineering front. So first and foremost important one is um, uh, SQL skill uh, for a data engineer. Um, so I, you probably will be writing uh, regular SQL, I mean to say ANSI SQL on your data warehouse, or uh, Postgres SQL, or maybe Spark SQL, but the concepts more or less remain the same. Uh, so for SQL round, um, it will be very straightforward. You just have to uh, focus on these three uh, uh, concepts. Uh, first one is joins. Uh, try to uh, uh, solve different problems uh, using joins. All kinds of joins. Get yourself familiarized with all kinds of joins and use. You should basically know when to use what kind of join um, and explain to the interviewer. And then one of the most important concepts that I've noticed that uh, Amazon and uh, Meta focuses is on self-join. Uh, Self-join is when you join the table with itself on a specific condition. Uh, so try to get yourself familiarized with self-join. Solve some problems like example, how will you uh, uh, do ranking without using rank function or dense rank function, right? Uh, let's say you have a table, uh, let's call it students table and you have student ID and marks column. Uh, and if you want to rank the students based on their marks, how would you do it without using rank functions? So that's one of the example where you can practice self-join. So once you get a hold of self-join, it will be easy. Uh, whenever you are stuck in interviews, think of self-join. If, if there is just one table, think of self-join. Maybe that will help you solve the problem. And then the other important concept is uh, window functions. Window functions like row number, rank, dense rank, first lag, lead, um, all those functions. Just make sure you practice uh, practice them as well. Uh, so SQL will be straightforward. While you're practicing, uh, maybe you're doing lead code or maybe you're practicing questions from Glassdoor that were asked in previous interviews. Whatever you do, you try to solve them in um, uh, practice such a way that you try to solve them in very little time so that in interviews uh, you will have more time uh, i mean you can solve the problems fairly quickly um, so that it will you know show your uh, uh, skills demonstrate your skills in sql try to solve as many problems as uh, uh, as possible while practicing and try to solve them in a uh, uh, quicker uh, time that will be of great help, especially when I was interviewing for Facebook. I was asked to write like five SQL queries in 30 minutes in the screening round. Uh, so you'll have to be very fast. So that's about it regarding the SQL round. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, you know that uh, like you will not be asked on any, any other concept. These are the main questions concepts that will be asked and then coming to the coding round coding will not be as intense 
as it is for software engineers. So you don't have to worry about lead code hard type of questions. Just focus on lead code easy and medium questions. That should be more than good enough. Even when you're doing easy and medium, you don't have to do you know all 200, 300 questions. You just focus on you know questions that are related to strings, string manipulation, sorting the strings, um, those kind of questions. And then dictionary, dictionary manipulations like flattening, nested JSON, uh, or you know <clears throat> getting the aggregates from a you know input dictionary so basic uh, dictionary manipulations dictionary parsing uh, you can expect this as well and then uh, array manipulations as well let's say they'll they'll give you an array and will ask you to find pair of numbers uh, that when summed up gives a target number right uh, so things like that so if you are already practicing for interviews i'm assuming you're going through lead code so focus your efforts on um, questions related to these three uh, concepts and then also additional one is you should know you know how to parse a csv file i've noticed like some companies um ask you questions on you know um, writing the logic or writing the code for parsing a csv file so just make sure csv or some file right uh, so just make sure you can do that as well. I would suggest not to worry about hard level lead code questions. You can just skip them. Just focus on easy and medium. Um, you should be good for the coding rounds as well. In coding rounds, um, you'll have ample time just uh, even before uh, writing the code. Uh, talk about your approach, discuss your approach, how we are trying to solve. Uh, you know, get a go ahead from the interviewer and then only write the code. Uh, uh, what I've realized is no matter how good your code is, if you're not able to explain it or if you're not able to speak out loud, um, uh, you'll probably not have a, a good result. So uh, focus on uh, speaking out loud, uh, talking about your approach and then only jump into code and uh, try to get the logic first and then you can think of edge cases. All these big tech companies uh, evaluate on uh, edge cases as well. You know, taking care of nuns, uh, lists with blank, list with zero uh, elements, blank values, all that stuff. But I would say focus on getting the logic first right away and then focus on, you know, optimizing your solution or adding edge cases and stuff like that. One thing that I didn't cover for SQL is that SQL... Uh, write the optimized SQL query uh, as you can, most optimized SQL query, um, uh, first time itself. Like uh, coding, I think you can uh, focus on getting the solution and then writing it optimized way, but SQL just practice in such a way that you write the most optimized uh, query. And then moving to the uh, third round, system design. System design, I've already have like two videos uh, yeah. I'll link them here as well. So basically, you should uh, uh, prepare for some uh, vague question. Like they'll be asking a question like design a data pipeline for so-and-so use case. Question will be very vague. So it's your responsibility, your job to ask questions, get, get the requirements, come with a high-level design, uh, you know, and then jump into your low-level design. Uh, so I'll link the video in, uh, uh, video here. Uh, you can go ahead and look at the system design uh, video in my channel. And then data modeling. Data modeling, you don't have to worry about normalized uh, data modeling. Generally, data engineers mainly deal with uh, denormalized or dimensional modeling. Uh, in dimensional modeling, you can uh, look at uh, star schema, snowflake schema, you know, what's the difference between them, and also practice uh, different use cases, like how would you design a dimensional model if you were to work for a company like Uber, or if you were to come work for a company like Airbnb, uh, right? Um, you know, and also uh, go through the concepts like what's fact, uh, what are dimensions, what kind of SCDs, how many SCDs and when to use what. Uh, so basic, uh, if you can cover all the basic dimensional modeling concepts, that should be good in the data modeling round. Um, even in data modeling, speak out loud, uh, talk about your approach, uh, discuss various things, discuss trade-offs, you know, what, uh, why, why you have chosen certain type of SED, uh, you know, it's always about uh, knowing your approach, like uh, talking about your approach, sharing your thoughts. So that's very important uh, in data modeling. And then there is this one big table uh, concept as well. Like you don't even have to design, you know, fact tables, dimension tables, and, you know, connect them 
in star or snowflake fashion you can always use one big table format as well if it fits you know your use case uh, one big table is basically you'll have all the columns in just one table in a denormalized fashion um, so you can also read about this one big table um, uh, format as well and then the other round so this these are all the technical things that you can expect right like sql coding encoding most likely you'll probably be using python or you are allowed to use different languages as well and then system design and then data modeling these are the four uh, technical rounds and then uh, uh, all the companies have this behavioral round they'll ask you a bunch of questions based on your experience uh, like uh, you know they'll ask you a question like tell me about a time where where you had to uh, disagree with your manager or tell me about a time where you had technical challenges uh, implementing a project or tell me about a time when you had to cut co corners to deliver a project and stuff like that so prepare like maybe five or six examples from your um, experience if you don't have experience as a student prepare something from your you know uh, uh, college level projects or the internships or assignments or whatever you have done in the past right uh, try to structure your response I'll always follow star um, like basically explain what was the situation or what you're trying to solve and then t stands for task right uh, what you have done it's uh, like what specifically you have done not as a team what you have done what was your contribution and then uh, uh, sorry like uh, t is for task like what's the task at hand and then action is what you have done uh, a is for action and then result what was the end result always try to come up with numbers you know, for data engineers right you can use examples like i have reduced the latency of old pipeline uh, I've, you know revamped the pipeline and reduce the latency from two minutes to one minute is one of the metric that you can share or you can also uh, say like uh, uh, something like i've cleaned up you know one tb of data this was the result you know for my project so always try to come up with some kind of numbers if possible for results uh, that will be beneficial for interviewer um, you know to understand the impact try to uh, explain the impact in numbers whenever possible that's very important uh, and then other important concepts based on the company like um, whenever you are preparing the examples for your behavioral round right uh, try to cover these if possible or try to learn about these especially spark spark is big data processing framework right so you would want to know the general concepts how spark works in in general and then also make sure you have one example ready for optimization right um uh, if you have experience optimizing uh, spark that's good if not uh, try to see where you can you know build up a story where you talk about optimizing the spark query optimizing a join or optimizing a skewed a data set optimizing uh, you know the processing of a skewed data set and things like that try to see if you can come up with a story for optimization or have something ready or at least have the concepts ready uh, and then configuration there will be questions like how would you process uh, you know one tb or one petabyte data mm -hmm. Uh, how would you how many number of nodes will you select how many number of executors what will be the memory what will be the uh, you know configuration of your spark cluster and all that stuff so uh, just work on one example think through uh, one example where you have to process like one petabyte of data so that you have some numbers ready and you can talk about uh, talk about it in the interviews and then also, uh, if you have experience, you probably have worked with either Redshift, Snowflake, or Databricks. Uh, try to understand the architecture behind Redshift. Uh, what happens when you run a query on Redshift cluster? Uh, what's the config? Mm, how many nodes uh, cluster you have? You know, how does the master and um, uh, follower node uh, work uh, in coordination and all that stuff? Same with Snowflake and same with. Uh, uh, databricks just try to cover basics for one of these services and i think you should be good and then if you're uh, if you have worked with some cloud services like aws azure or gcp uh, just focus on the services that are related to data engineering field um, and try to understand the basics uh, cost uh, costing piece and all that stuff like uh, example if you are familiar with aws how does uh, aws glue work um, what are the different kinds of uh, um, workflows that you can set up with AWS Glue and what's the costing piece and all that stuff. So that will be um, helpful. Um, 
and then uh, like uh, orchestration service will, is also important like if you have worked with airflow it's good if not try to learn the uh, learn the basic concepts of airflow like what's dag uh, what's the operators what are the sensors all, all like very basic stuff so that you can uh, you know uh, show that you're aware of airflow that you have used airflow um, so these are the important concepts yeah, I feel like if you focus your preparations on these main concepts, I think you should be good for big tech companies, even for small companies or medium sized companies, they, they sh should work. Um, yeah, SQL, again, focus on solving the problems, uh, writing the queries uh, in fast, uh, like in quicker time, that will be very helpful in you know interviews. And then coding, just focus on medium, easy, lead code level questions that do only on these specific categories. Don't waste your time uh, solving hard problems and, you know, problems that you'll probably won't expect in DE rounds. And then system design, um, again, ask as many questions as possible. Try to make it as collaborative as possible in the system design round. And same goes with data modeling. Cover some basics like snowflake schema, star schema, um, you, know, you know, different approaches to build your tables, more um, schemas and stuff. And then behavioral round, try to prepare like four or five examples from your past experience. Try to come up with, you know, with the metrics, follow the star schema so that you are, your response or your answer is structured. Um, and then other important concepts, you know, try to go over big data processing framework or something like Spark. How does it work? What's the config? How can you conf uh, do the configuration? Uh, how can you optimize the query or a bad, a bad running code in Spark? And then learn about Redshift and then have some basic knowledge of some AWS cloud services if you if you have any experience or just go through them, even if you're a refresher. And then also learn about Airflow uh, as an orchestration service. I'll share these details in the uh, description. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment and I can connect with you. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Bye.